Mm-hmm. Welcome to Bible Talk with Reverend Pfeiffer. I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. Um, what I'll be doing today is asking the age-old question. And that question is, should the Bible be taught in schools? Now, I know this, this has been debated for years. And uh, while on the surface, it sounds good. And many people we have been going back and forth over the years trying, saying that if they thinking that if they just because you put the Bible in the school that it's going to change things. But we know that's not true because the Bible says your heart has to be changed. Now, dealing with this subject, I do realize that uh, when, when someone says that the Bible shouldn't be put back in school, they either think that they may think that you're either an atheist or they may think that your doctrine is all screwed up. But today, what I would like to do for those who share this view that the Bible should be taught in the school, I want to ask you a few questions. And at the end of this, I want to see if you still feel the same way about Bibles uh, being taught in the school. Now, one of the questions I always ask is this. uh, What Bible are they going to teach? See, when we say the Bible should be taught in school, we don't a lot of people don't realize there's more than one Bible. There's the Satanic Bible. There's a Bible, uh, the Buddhist Bible, the, I think it's called the Topeka. There's different uh, types of Bible. And you, we know that most of the people who in in position to make decisions on whether or not the Bible, uh, which Bible will be taught in the school, uh, uh, it is safe to say that most of those people are unbelievers. And so more than likely, if a Bible is chosen to be taught in school, it won't be the Christian Bible. It would be the Bible that... Uh, that try to include everyone or the Bible that tries to uh, uh, belittle what Christ done. And so we have to be careful when we be careful what we ask for, because uh, there are people, there are Bibles we got from different uh, fake religions. And trust me, they're going to be up there right before the board trying to put, get this Bible in there. And that's one of the things I would have to one. My number one question would be what Bible would be taught? Uh, if they decide to choose the Bible, because trust me, trust and believe it would not be the Christian Bible. Number two, will everyone, will every student have to participate once the Bible is being chosen? Now, if you're a Christian, do you want your child listening uh, uh, in a, a Bible discussion or in a Bible study or in a curriculum where the Satanic Bible is being taught? Because that's what would happen if they decide on one Bible. That Bible. Uh, uh, Every child would have to study from the Bible that they chose, that the, that the, that the uh, organization or the group or the board chose for them to, uh, to, uh, for it to be in the Bible. So we have to be careful what we ask for. Now, I mean, I, on, on the surface, I get what you're saying, that the Bible, should, should the Bible be taught in school? And a lot of you say yes, but we got to understand, we, gotta, we, we don't go a step, we need to go a step further. Which Bible will be taught? Don't just say Bible because that, that's vague. That's too vague. And so we have to be careful what we, what we ask for because we know that outside of Jesus Christ and we know that uh, all these other Bibles, they, um, they tend to discredit what Jesus done, you know. And, 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 and despite what many of you believe, not all roads lead to God. Now, if you're a Christian, would you want your want your child studying the Quran? The Quran. See, so so believers, we have to be careful. That sounds good on the surface. That that put Bible back in school, but you can put all the Bibles back in the school that you want to. But but if a person's heart is not changed, it's not going to matter how many Bibles you got in the school. And if you got the wrong person teaching it, that can be that can be even a, a bigger disaster. If you got someone in there teaching something that's not biblical, and so that's that's what we have to really think about. Now, also, I have another question: Is that who would be teaching the Bible once they decide on the Bible? Who would be teaching this Bible? Will it be someone uh, unbelief, uh, unbeliever? Will it be someone that's uh, that the board chose because they uh, got a degree in religious studies. See, people, as a child of God, as Christians, we don't have uh, a religion. We have a relationship. That is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And so you don't want a religious person teaching about Christ, especially if they don't have a personal relationship with him. They don't have the Holy Spirit in them. See, 
Because when you stand, when we stand before God, no amount of religious degrees is going to be accepted if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So let's be careful when we when we talk about uh, putting Bible back in the school. We got to look at all everything. We got to look at everything. We got to be specific at what we're asking for. So when we ask should the Bible be put back in school, we say the Christian Bible, the Holy Bible. See, we got to be specific because if we're not specific, trust me, the devil will will take that vagueness that we say the Bible and they can say, well, look, we put Bible back in the school. And we, you know how it is when you're dealing with, with boards and stuff like that. Once they do something, it takes years to, to undo it, you know, because there's not a willingness to do it, to undo a wrongdoing. So we just, let's be careful when we ask uh, about the Bible. And also what I would, another question I would like to ask, Will this class be mandatory? If you if you're a Christian, you're a Christian, you're a Christian parent, and you're sending your child to school. What I one next next question I would want to know is: Is this class mandatory? Uh, is it would this class be? Should I say? Would this class uh, determine become a, a a a requirement? I guess that's what I'm looking for: a requirement for your child to move to the next grade, or a requirement for graduation, or whatever it may be. Would it is it will it be a requirement? So these are things we got to, we have to think because you remember, it's very dangerous to uh, to mix uh, the spiritual with the secular. See, because most of the time you got secular people, unbelievers making decisions for Christians. That's not what you want. So let's we got to be careful. We got to be careful what we ask for. I know I know what you mean when you say put by back in school. That sounds good on the surface. It really does. But, but when we dig down, we got to ask ourselves now, who's going to be teaching this class? What, uh, uh, what Bible are we going to be or going to be taught? So let's be let's be careful, people. Let's let's be careful. And uh, <clears throat> as I said, would the, would the would the class be mandatory? And who will who? What are these individuals that will be teaching the class? We got. Like, I think I mentioned that earlier. What are their qualification? You know. And, and, and if, if these people don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, they have no qualifications. I don't care how many degrees they got. See, when God calls you to do something, it has nothing to do with, do with degrees. It has nothing to do with your education. See, God chooses those who he wants to serve in and to teach his word. That's why not everybody can be a preacher. Not everybody can be a, a, a deacon or, or, or you know, the, the gift that he mentioned in, uh, he mentioned in uh, Ephesians. Some of you gave pastors, teachers, and so on. But the thing is, that, see, you're not chosen by God because of your education. See, like me, I didn't go to Bible school to become a preacher, uh, become a minister. I, was a, I, went, I went to Bible school because I was a minister, because I was chosen, of, chosen uh, by God. I wasn't chosen by man. Because you know how men are, we, we, we'll choose everything that look good, or if somebody sounds good, or if somebody can get up there and make people feel good, we think that is a minister, see? But most of these people don't preach any gospel. They preach what I call feel-good sermons. So let's be careful about one Bible in the school, see? Because, like I said before, there are a number of Bibles. You got this, like I said, the Satanic Bible. You got the Quran. You got the uh, Topeka from the Buddhists. You got, you got this. Uh, uh, I can't think of it right now, but you got this, uh, this Bible where they do, uh, where they do chants and all kind of call up spirits, all kind of nonsense. People, you have to be very careful what you ask for, asking for. See, and 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 for me, I personally don't uh, don't believe that the Bible should be taught in school unless we get some clarification on which Bible. Who's going to be teaching the Bible? What, is, what are they going to be teaching? What are their credentials in terms of their faith? I want to know what their faith is. I don't want, if I'm a, if I'm a Christian parent, I don't, want, I don't want my kids to be taught by Muslims. And, by, and, if, and I'm sure if you're a Muslim, you don't want your kids being taught by Christians. See? So that's why we have to be careful because what usually happens is what usually happens is uh, compromise will come in. When they choose a Bible, it's going to be compromised. Well, see this Bible over here. It sounds good. It includes everybody. And, and so this is one that sounds good. See, because the Bible that, the, the Bible that Christians have, the Bible that, that I read, God said in the end of time, he's going to separate the sheep from the goat. Not everybody is going to heaven. Not all roads lead to God. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. See, 
but people will tell you that that uh, uh, that uh, you know all this R.I.P. rest in rest in peace and or rest in heaven and and all this stuff and you know good and well those people lived a sinful life when they were alive but then as soon as they die we want to put them in heaven. See, so we have to be careful, people. Be careful about about what you ask for, because you know that the devil. The devil always got a way of weaseling his way in there. Now, most of the people that say they want the Bible in school have good intentions. I, I, I get that. They have good intentions. And uh, while, like I said, on the surface, it sounds good. But when you get to realizing that there's more than just the Holy Bible, there's a lot of Bibles. Then you've got Bibles who have been, some people have, have changed and tampered with and try to uh, take away the deity of Christ and all kind of stuff that you try to do, you know. A lot of, lot of Bibles just say, oh, he was a good man. But yet this man raised, rose from the dead, but yet they'll say he's just a good man. So we have to be careful, people. I personally do not believe that Bible should be taught in school. As I said earlier, it's a dangerous thing to mix the spiritual with the secular. See, because what happens is we, it, it get redefined. See, you see how uh, we, we live in this PC culture now. Uh, politically correct, for those of you who may not know. We live in a society where we can't say nothing is wrong anymore. You know, we, can, we can't tell people something is wrong anymore. Uh, because uh, uh, it's, it's not, it doesn't, it, it gets to the point where it's not whether something is wrong, it's whether it's, is it wrong to you? Well, what's wrong, what's wrong for you may not be wrong for me, or what's right for you right, might not be right, right for uh, me. But here's the thing. The, the Bible says that there is a right and there is a wrong. See, see the Bible that we that, that we read, it separates, you know, it separates sin, sin. It separates sin. If you in sin, if you in sin, according to the, the Christian Bible, God has a plan for that. God has a said that that's why Christ came and died. The sin that you commit now, people, here's the thing. We have to realize that the devil will take is taking is using everything he can because he know that he have but a short time. He's taking everything that he's of, of God and try to pervert it. See, and there's no doubt he he's tried to do it with the Bible as well. See, because he knows he has a short time. And so when we start talking about put mixing the the, the spiritual with the secular, you best believe. If they choose the Christian Bible, they're going to choose somebody who probably don't even believe in God to teach it. So you naturally you know, you know they can't teach it with any conviction. If they don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, it's, it's impossible to teach the Bible if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. And that only comes if you receive if you have accepted Christ as your Savior. And not only just accepted Christ as your Savior, but being obedient to God's Word. See, because when you get to teaching the Bible, you can't. You got to move those feelings out the way. You got to move your own personal opinion out the way. See, because God is directed what he says. He means what he says and says what he means. See, so what am I talking about? I'm talking about uh, should the Bible be taught in school? People, be careful. Be very, very careful. See, because now you got people questioning the creation. See, people, they question the creation and, 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 and because they mind can't, because they're, uh, the Bible said they're spiritually discerned, but because their mind can't grasp the spiritual thing, and the reason why your mind can't grasp the spiritual thing because you don't have the Spirit of God in you. When you get a natural a person with a natural mind trying to understand spiritual things, disaster going to erupt. See? So if you know if it goes into the schools, I promise you, <laughs> they're, they're going to have more than one teacher. And I guarantee the majority of them teachers are not going to be Christians. So they can't teach you with no, with no conviction. And they, can, and they can't understand God's word without the spirit. See, and so then we got what they call the, uh, the satanic Bible. Many of you know about this Bible. Where, per, you know, pretty much um, a lot of people in Hollywood have this Bible. This is, this is, this, that's their gospel. People, you, you got to be, be careful. You, you, you don't want to be a part of something that's, that, that the intention is good, but the end results is bad. 
See, because if you, the Bible said, train up a child in the ways to go when he only want to depart from it. You teaching your child the ways of God as they children, as they grew up, and then when they go to school, then they hear someone saying something totally against what you've already taught because they don't know God, but because that's a class for them in the curriculum, or, 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 or they're the teacher for that class, they teach them something totally different. Then that causes conflicts in your homes. This is why I'm against mixing the spiritual with the secular. Now, if, if we knew we were going to uh, uh, pick the Christian Bible to be taught in school and then they're going to have believers teaching that, okay, that, that know how to rightly divide the word of truth because some Christians are screwed up too with their doctrine. So we want to have somebody to rightly divide the word of truth that's teaching it. So it's just, I said all that to say this. You see that so many, it, so many things can happen. So much confusion can erupt, you know. And then you're going to have, I, I guarantee you, you're going to have, even if you had a Christian uh, teaching the Bible, for, then the next thing, is he Pentecostal? Is he Baptist? Is he non denomination? See, then that's going to erupt. Then the next thing you know, nothing will ever get resolved. Nothing will ever get resolved. So don't, I, I say to any of you, don't, don't mix the spiritual with the secular. See, and I, and I never understood that. I never understood that because um, I can read my Bible. I don't, I don't need to have it... Uh, have it uh, 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 ordained by a board for me to read my Bible. I would take my Bible to school anyway and read anyway. Same thing with prayer. I don't need to be in no group to pray because I can get out like to pray to myself, pray, uh, get to myself and pray to, pray to God my, on my own. I don't need a group. I don't need, and I definitely don't need a, a, a board or a secular board to create something for me to do that, what I already do, already do anyway. Because if you already read your, read your Bible, you know, and if you're already praying, See, then that, that, that shouldn't even be an issue. See, you, and so we have to be careful, people. I, I, I continue to say you have to be careful what you're asking for. See, just because the Bible's in the school does not make, mean that that school is going to be holy. It does not mean that, uh, it does not mean that, uh, that it's going to make the kids better. <laughs> it doesn't. See, just putting it there, that, that's not going to change anything. How many people house you went to who got, who got Bibles just sitting on the table collecting dust? What am I talking about? Should Bible be taught in the school? I say no. I say it with a, with, a, with, a, with a resounding no. No, it's too much confusion can erupt. See, because... Uh, they're not going to give you what you ask for. They, they'll, they'll agree with you that the Bible should be taught. Pretty much anybody, because most people, if you ask them, should the Bible be taught in the school, they oh, yeah, 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 they agree with you. But then, when, then as you get closer to this happening, you start to see, like, okay, well, which Bible? Okay, well, no, the Bible didn't say that. Or, or they'll start arguing about the Bible. We can't even, we can't even uh, tell people that, um, we can't even, uh, uh, um, Say that what anybody do is wrong anymore. See, when I grew up, there was there was there was boys and girls. Now, if you tell somebody that, that they're a boy, you, I mean, you get canceled. If you tell a little boy he can't be a girl, or you tell a little girl he can't be a boy, you'll get canceled. See, the devil knows what he's doing, but don't fall for that. Don't get caught up in this this stuff because it sounds good. Don't get caught up in that. See? Because most of these, most of the, in the world has got so diverse now. Can you imagine the number of Bibles will be up in there? And what are the chances is the true Bible going to end up in there? Because now they just want to make people feel good. See? You look at, you, you, you watch how when somebody tells somebody that they die without a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, how they look at you. See, and the thing is, see, this was just Bible. This Bible gives you instruction for righteousness. See, this Bible tells you how to go to heaven, not how the heavens go. See, and so I beg you, I, I, I plead with you. Don't 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 subject your kids or maybe grandkids to, to something that you on, on, on the surface you, you feel is OK. And on the surface, it sounds good. See. 
it's really going to be bad if your kids, your kids or grandkids come back home talking about there is there really is no God and that God did not create the create the uh, the heavens and earth in the number of days He said. Too much can go wrong, people. Too much. And so we have to, we have to just uh, uh, continue to pray and, and, and look to God for something like this. See, for me, when there's an issue like this, I, I look to God. I pray, Lord, let your will be done. See, I know what I want, but Lord, what do you want? What do you want? See, because if, if, you, actually, if you really prayed about should I be taught to school, I guarantee you, God will show you the tricks of the devil or the loopholes that the devil will use to try to discredit this book. Because if they choose this book, they, it won't be taught the way it was meant to be taught. See? Because most of the people with this Bible, the only thing they want to say, well, Christ hung around sinners. Well, who else could he hang around? He was the only righteous person. They just want to stay in there. And, they, and, 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 and most of the people got, got one slogan, judge ye not. They, they'll go there, they'll go there, find this Bible, look in this Bible. That's, that's what they look for. Judge ye not. And they're going to look for things uh, not so much as, I, I, I shouldn't say condemn because it's a bad word, but they're going to look for what, what God say about sin. They're going to go and try to find all the good, feel good, good uh, verses. See, people, let me tell you something. You can get all the Bibles that you want to and put them in the school. And it's not going to mean a thing on Judgment Day. Because you see, one day, we won't, we won't need this. See, because the Bible said, God said, there comes a time when he's going to judge the world. See, this book, this book was put together to give us instruction in righteousness as believers. But one day we won't need this because we will be with the word. See, and the question I have for you, and I do this in all my videos, that I want to I step away and say this, and I, I, this is very important. This is the most, most important part of this video you ever, ever uh, uh, hear. My question to you, my question to you, that if you wish to die right now and stood before God, what would be your, uh, your fate? Let me repeat that. If you stood before God on Judgment Day, what would be your fate? Would he say, come on into my kingdom, or would he say, depart from me, I never knew you? People, let me tell you something. There coming a time, and not too distant future, where we all going to have to give an account of ourselves. Because God left his word here, the Bible. And if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, hell is your home for eternity. He's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. See, we can go back and forth on whether or not, or should not, would not, could not, the Bible be taught in school. But, but the, the, that's not the issue. The issue is, uh, uh, when, the, when John 3, 16, since we're talking about the Bible, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. But the next verse, very next verse, people stop there. But he said, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Have you been saved by the blood of Jesus? Have you ever asked Christ into your life to save you? Have you ever came to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ? Because if you haven't, my friend, if you haven't, uh, uh, you're condemned. You stand condemned. You stand condemned. See? You, and, and, and despite what people might tell you, there is no such thing as purgatory, and you will not get a second chance. The Bible says it is pointed unto man wants to die after this the judgment. And what I usually do in all of my videos, you'll see that what I like to do, give is what they call the sinner's prayer. There's nothing magical about the words. But if you listen and you listen to this program right now, and you know that you have not accepted Christ, I'm not talking about how many times you went to church. I'm not talking about you being baptized. I'm not talking about... Uh, all this tongue speak, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you know that you know that you know that you have a personal relationship with Christ. See, because here's the thing. When the last person is saved, that's when Christ comes back. Will you be left here? I want you to pray this prayer with me. It's a simple prayer. 
There's nothing magical about the word. I say this all the time. It's not the magical word. It's not, there's nothing magical about the words. It's the attitude of the heart. And I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer. And after this prayer, uh, I want you to, that if you, if you prayed that prayer to, to uh, send me a letter, or send me an email, I'm sorry, send me an email. Uh, email. And so uh, let's, let's bow here. It said, Dear God, I confess that I'm a sinner. I know that I can't save myself. Lord, I've been living in sin, and I want to change. I believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again. And Lord, forgive me for those sins. I now want to accept Christ in my life, into my heart, the best way I know how, Father God. And according to Romans 10, 9 to 10, 13, the Roman rose of salvation, I am saved. I want to thank you for for uh, 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 sending Jesus into my heart and save me in Jesus' name, amen. As you can see, people, if you prayed that prayer, let me know so I can send you some free literature. There's nothing magical about the words. Salvation is not hard. Don't let these people tell you that you gotta jump through a lot of hoops or you gotta go tarry for 20 years or 10 years or 10 months or all week. No, people. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says, for with the mouth confessions are made. You're confessing, you know, that Jesus is Lord. See, don't let people fool you. And, and some of you out there right now know you're not born again. You've been going to church. People, your church membership is not going to mean a thing when you stand before God. How many times you went to church? I don't care if you was an usher, deacon, heck, even a pastor, a preacher. Ain't no titles gonna get you into heaven. See, you must be born again. See, the Bible, according to Christ, say, except the man be born again, he should not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And so I wanna thank you guys. I, I, I wanna thank you for tuning in. But please, people, don't let another day go without accepting Christ as your savior. Because remember, the decision is for the living. Remember, once you're dead, you can't make a decision. And when you die, that decision is already made. I want to thank you guys for tuning in, and I look forward to t talking to you again next week. Thank you uh, for tuning in with uh, Bible Talk with Reverend Pfeiffer. Have a blessed day, and God bless you.